All right, today we're going to be talking about motion, velocity, and acceleration. Um, as we get started, you may want to have a calculator with you because we're going to do a couple of things with calculators. And so if you need to, pause the video, go grab the calculator, make sure you have that thing because we're definitely going to use it today. Um, you'll notice I have some definitions on the screen. You may want to go ahead and pause it and get this, and we'll come back and talk about it. Motion can be described as a change in an object's position, something moving, like the girl climbing up the rope that you see in the picture. Average velocity, speed, is the change of position over, of an object over time. First thing I want to talk about is velocity and speed. Those words mean the same thing. Your velocity of your car is how fast your car is going. We call it, what speed are you going? So we're going to talk about velocity first. Here's our next screen. Give you a second to uh, pause the video and write this bullet down, and then we'll come back and talk about it. <clears throat> Velocity, which is letter V, is the slope, remember from your math class, rise over run, of a position, distance versus time graph. Well, you'll notice in this picture um, that you have distance and time. It might be helpful if I go ahead and show you this. Make sure you write this formula down. This is one of the formulas off the formula chart that they give you on the tax test. V equals, velocity equals distance divided by time. So, for example, if they told you you were going 50 meters per second, you're going 50 meters every one second. Distance, meters, time, seconds. If they told you you're going 55 miles per hour, same thing, just like in your car. 55 miles, there's your distance per time. And so you can actually graph that, and so sometimes they'll give you a graph and have you look up something, but... At this point, we're just looking at what velocity actually is. You don't have to really draw this picture, but you'll notice distance divided by time gives you velocity. And so the graph shows the same thing the formula does. Now, here's a really good example of dealing with velocities. And so I'm going to give you a second to look at it and see if you can come up with the answer. So pause the video, see if you can get the answer. Move it up just a little bit so you can see all the answers. And then we'll come back in a minute and solve it. <clears throat> all right, the question says, the diagram represents total travel of a teacher on a Saturday. Which part of the trip is made at the greatest average speed or the greatest velocity? How do you work this? Well, you calculate velocity for each segment. So I'm going to grab my handy-dandy calculator and I'm going to take the first one which is 12 divided by 8 and that is 1.5 kilometers per minute and this one right here 14 divided by 12 is 1.2 kilometers per minute we'll go to this one next 11 divided by 15, my answer is 0.73, or 0.7 is good enough, kilometers per minute. Notice that each of them are in the same units. Kilometers divided by minutes, kilometers divided by minutes, kilometers divided by minutes. So when I do the top one, 15 divided by 9, the answer I get on my calculator is 1.7. Kilometers per minute. And so when I look at all my numbers, that one happens to be the largest. So that was at S. There's my answer. Very simple question. You just ended up having to work the problem multiple times to find your answer. Velocity is the distance divided by time. And since they already gave me the distance and time in each of these, it maybe made it real easy to look at my answer. So if the other thing I would always look at is make sure they're all in the same unit, kilometer, minute, kilometer, minute, kilometer, minute, kilometer, minute. And so it's really easy to evaluate. Speed doesn't always have to be in kilometers per minute. It can be in miles per hour, like your car, or it can be in meters per second. It doesn't matter. Just look at your unit make sure they all match. 
Now, whenever we take velocity, like we're driving a car, let's say we're going 55 miles an hour down the road and then the speed limit changes and we can now go faster, that's called acceleration. It's taking velocity and speeding it up. We are accelerating the car. So I'll give you a second to jot down these two bullets and we'll come right back. All right, acceleration is the slope, and they're talking about graphing again, of velocity and time. So what you're talking about is going faster in a shorter period of time. So if I'm speeding my car up really fast, then I'm accelerating faster than someone that's pushing the pedal slower. And this one says that you could actually graph the distances as well. Now, again, the graphs aren't used very much, but the idea is to show you velocity divided by time. Now, notice here something's happening. Velocity, which is meters per second, is going to end up being divided by seconds again. Now, that looks really weird. Meters per second divided by second. Sometimes you'll see it written like this, meters per second squared. Don't let that confuse you, okay? It's just a unit. It's not going to hurt the number at all. So let's see what we're talking about here. Here is an example that deals with acceleration and the actual formula. I'll give you a second to jot it down, and then we'll come back and talk about it specifically. All right, acceleration is a change in an object's velocity. You're either speeding up or you're slowing down. When an object's speed changes over time, is it, it is accelerating or decelerating if you're slowing down. The formula for it, for acceleration, I'm going to rewrite it if this is confusing for you. Acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by change in time. How long did it take? Now, let me explain that again. Final velocity, what was your final speed? Initial velocity, what was your first speed? And how long did it take? There's that unit I was talking about a while ago. The units of acceleration are in meters per second squared. Don't let that confuse you too much. Uh, it's really not that difficult. Now, we're going to do a couple of examples of velocity and acceleration using these formulas that we just saw. And you'll find it's not too difficult. It's just like the math we were doing in the others. We're just plugging numbers into a formula. Here's an example that I want to go through with you. Um, and this very first one I'm going to do is going to be a velocity question. And here it is. A toy car moves 10 meters in 5 seconds. What is its velocity or speed? Give you a second to jot that down. Now remember as we go along, if you need to pause the video, pause it and then we'll jump back in. So you first thing you have to do is you have to get the formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. Every single time. Quick reminder, anytime you're going to work any of these, always write the formula. Remember, we're going to be getting the formulas off that formula chart that they give us. And that formula chart is provided for you when you take the test. And so all I'm doing is copying it off of here to use it. Now, let's work the problem. Toy car moves at 10 meters. Well, that goes right there. In five seconds, there's my time. So it's a simple division. So I grab my handy dandy calculator, or in this case, I can do this math myself. 10 meters divided by five seconds. 10 divided by five is two. The units don't change. Two meters per second. That would be the answer that I'd look for on the test. Pretty simple to do. Let's do another one real quick. Maybe in this case a little more difficult, or let's just change it around a little bit. It's really not going to be any more difficult. A man runs at 1.4 meters per second for 800 meters. How long did it take? Well, 
you search the formula chart and what you find real quickly is a man runs at, that's a velocity and that's a distance. So speed equals distance divided by time. So a man runs at 1.4 meters per second, that's going to go there, 800 meters, 800 meters. Is that time? No, that's the distance, 800 meters. There's my, that's what I don't know. Now when we go to solve this in algebra, we did this in one of the other sessions, it's easy to put this over 1 and you have fraction equals fraction. In math class, fraction equals fraction is cross multiply. So 1 times 800 is 800, and 1.4 times question mark, or sometimes in math class they'll put an x, 1.4x goes there. To solve this math, um, one point, I want to leave the x right there, so I want to divide by 1.4 because it's the opposite, and what I do on one side, I do on the other side, so it just becomes calculator work. And so I'm going to take my handy handy calculator, 800 divided by 1.4, and I get an answer, 571.4. 571.4. What are the units? Well, I see a meter and I see a meter. Those match, so this must be in seconds. And that would be the answer that I would look for on the test. That one's not too difficult. Okay? Again, find the formula, plug in the numbers, where they go. So that's how you do a velocity in the next section in a minute. Uh, you'll try another one of those by yourself. But let's do acceleration real quick. Acceleration. And the reason I take both of these together is speeding up and slowing down in your car are very similar. We're used to this. And so that's why I put these problems together. So let's talk about a car. A car goes 12.6 meters per second to 5.8 meters per second in 15 seconds. What is its acceleration? Oops. Alright. When you read through the question, the very first thing you want to do is find a formula that has the word acceleration in it. And it's the one that looks like this. Remember, the triangle means change. How much did the time change? So we'll do that in a minute. A car goes 12.6 meters per second. That's a velocity. How do I know that, just in case that confuses you? This unit is a speed. It's how far and how fast in the time. So that's what that unit is. That's how I know. Car goes 12.6 meters per second in to 5.8. Wow, it's changing. 12.6 to 5.8. That's slowing down. Okay. Um, so this says final velocity. Well, at the end it was going 5.8 meters per second. Its initial velocity is 12.6 meters per second. Now this may seem confusing. How can you take a small number minus a big number? Well, the formula says final minus initial. It ended at this, started at this. Let's see what happens in a second. In 15 seconds. The change in time was 15 seconds. All right. So I'm just going to put the numbers in my calculator and see what happens. 5.8 minus 12.6. That's a negative number. That's okay right now. Divided by 15. The answer that I get on my calculator, let me slide that over so you can see it, 0.5. We'll just round that. But it says negative. Did you see that on there? Negative 0.5 meters per second per second. So I have m divided by s and then divided by an s or negative 0.5 meters per second squared. Those are both these two things right here are the same thing. How can I have a negative? I'm slowing down and in math negative means slowing down or in physics and math. So that's the right answer. Very good. Very good. All right. This is how you use the acceleration and velocity formulas. In the next session that you're about to go to, you're going to get to try some. Plug the numbers in, solve them slowly, and I'll work them with you, and let's see how we do. Good luck.